Hello everyone and I hope you're all doing very well. This is the 10th video in a series of videos that we're doing about what can kill a realistic or relatively realistic modern US carrier group, the pinnacle of the world's navy. And we've done all the suggestions as you've seen there and we've got lots more suggestions coming in. We're currently on the unrestricted version. Basically we can test whatever we want. What we're going to test today is the biggie. One. I'd love to see in the last video a fight between a US carrier group against a proper Russian carrier group just to see how that would look. Obviously it's never happened in the world ever but what would it look like? We've set it up as best we possibly can. There are lots of stipulations here. This is an incredibly complex thing to do even to think about modelling it so there are lots of stipulations and some restrictions we've had to make. Let's look at the US carrier group just to remind you what we've got. Now this will come in different constitutions. If you look at all the US carrier groups that sailed in modernity there have been different constitutions but the average that we found and if you go and just google it this is pretty much what you're going to come up with you've got a Nimitz class nuclear carrier supercarrier in the middle here you've got support vessels you probably have more than two but because they're actually going to have no part in these battles I've just put two in just you know for some visuals we've got four times Ali Burke class destroyers they are Aegis equipped destroyers so one two three four we've got two times Ticonderoga cruisers which you will know about at the back there, and that's realistic. And then we've got uh, two times frigates. I know they say destroy here. Uh, don't worry too much about that. It, I don't know why it says that in DCS, but these are frigates. We all know they are. Oliver has a Perry, a very common class. We are protected underneath by two hunter killer submarines. Now, a lot of you saying that in real life it will be up to four. From what we've seen, it could be between two and four. So we've just chosen two because that's what we've just always had. So we might as well, if it's not wrong, stick to what we've got. The spacing has changed throughout the different videos because you guys have been arguing you've sent me anywhere between 5 and 15 miles spread. So we've got currently, if you ignore the carriers, about you know 12 miles spread, by about 8, 9 miles spread. Seems to keep just about everyone happy. Now we can't carry in DCS the air power that they can in real life. In real life, I don't know how many planes are on a supercarrier. Tens? A hundred? You can't do that in DCS. You can have a kind of a, a couple of flights and that's fine. Um, and we're really more interested in, in the Navy here than the air power anyway. We've got two planes fully armed, up and ready to fight. In real life you may have more, but we've stuck with two throughout this series and let's go with two. And we've got a, a Hawkeye, we've got an AWACS up doing its thing. And that is our modern, pretty realistic US carrier group. It's moving at cruise speed of, I think, 15, 16 knots. Uh, we've chosen to be at its weakest point. If it's in the middle of the ocean, it's basically invincible. We all know that because it would send fleets of hornets out with whatever weapon they wanted to. But historically, it is weak when it comes through the Strait of Hormuz. And it has done this two or three times in real life through the last 50 years. Gets it in this lovely little pinch point where we can launch attacks from hidden things on the ground. Okay, so that's that. Next, let's move on to the Russian carrier group. Now, as you all know, the Russians have a completely different naval doctrine to America. They don't project their power like the Americans do. They don't even have any aircraft carriers. They've got one battle cruiser that they've, um, <laughs> you know, this this here, the Admiral Kuznetsov. It is, as you can see, an aircraft carrier. Legally, though, it's not an aircraft carrier. It's a battle cruiser for the rules of getting through the Dardanelles, I think it is. But, you know, for all intents and purposes, it carries aeroplanes. It's an aircraft carrier. It is actually an anti-ship ship as well. Um, if you see at the front there, we've got anti-ship missiles there, uh, which is how they can classify it as a battle cruiser. Now, getting information about a realistic Russian fleet is very difficult. It's not commonplace like the American fleet. And so I've got to justify it to you. And we found various information. So the only way to find out what a realistic Russian carrier group would be like was to look at history. And this, because Nesov hasn't sailed many times. But when it had did sail in 2016, 2017, it sailed with the following. We've got several websites we've looked at, and this appears to be the average. Accompanied by one Kirov class guided missile cruiser. This is a carrier killing offensive cruiser, but it can be used for defensive duties, and it has done. If you want to know more about the Kirov, we've got a whole massive hour long video on it, and we featured it massively on our previous uh, carrier attack video. We've got Peter the Great. Next is a Slava class cruiser, and we've got that in DCS as well. We've got the Muscova that accompanied uh, the Kuznetsov. Next, I always struggle with this, Sovremeni class destroyer. This is an anti-surface warfare destroyer. We don't have one. Next is a Udaloi class anti-submarine warfare destroyer. We don't have one. And next is a Kravak 1 or 2 frigate uh, anti-submarine as well. I don't think we have a Kravak, but we've got something very similar. So that is battlecruiser, cruiser, destroyer, destroyer, frigate. So let's see how close we could get. 
Kuznetsov in the middle, Peter the Great up there. That is your Kirov class, that's your carrier killer there. We've got Muscova there, that's our Slava class cruiser. We don't have any destroyers. I know these say destroyers here, they're not destroyers, they're frigates. Everyone knows they're frigates. Don't know why DCS does that. They are, I think I chose Noise Shimi, as you can see there. So, because I didn't have any destroyers to choose from, what I've done is gone in the middle. I've picked one frigate there, that's a frigate. And instead of two destroyers, I've picked a cruiser and a frigate to average out to be two destroyers. I hope everyone would agree with that. So I've got another Slava class cruiser and I've got a guided missile frigate, Noise Tsushima there, averaging out as two destroyers. So that's as realistic as I can get without choosing, you know, bringing American destroyers in and stuff like that, which I think would get a little bit silly if we started doing that at that point, or Chinese contemporaries. We've got a couple of support vessels, but they'll play no part in it, so just ignore them. Uh, the Kuznetsov is there, and it's got four planes on. That's the most we can have uh, in DCS. So it carries like 30 or 40, I think, planes in real life. But again, we can't do that. And this is not really much about air power anyway. It's got two planes airborne, uh, ready for fighting, fully equipped, just to match the American two Hornets. And an AWACS. Whether this would actually have an AWACS in real life, I, we haven't managed to figure out. But we're going to make it have an AWACS. In fact, I'm almost certain it wouldn't have an AWACS. In fact, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it certainly wouldn't have an A-50 anyway. Two similar submarines as well. The submarines are almost certainly not going to have any play in this at all. Because of the distances involved and just the way they work in DTS at the moment. They're not realistic at the moment. So you can almost rub the submarines out as well. And that's it. Uh, we're going to start them 100 miles apart from each other. That's not... I mean, I'm not trying to bias anyone or anything, but that's just what we've chosen for the test so far. Would a Russian carrier ever get 100 miles near an American carrier in real life? No, obviously not. It's not possible. What would happen is this Nimitz here would just launch all of its F-18s and then would just completely obliterate this carrier here with all of its harpoons. Or this would, these guys would launch all of their Su-33s and obliterate this with all of its whatever anti-ship warfare missiles they carry but that's not what we're about today a we can't model that anyway in dcs because we can't get the carriers to carry that many and b that's not what we're about we don't want them to kill each other a thousand miles away like they would in real life we want them to fight shells going in the air missiles going in the air so we're essentially scrubbing the uh, uh the air power there is some air power just for a bit of fun uh, the air power is not going to be able to carry anti-ship missiles, so they are not going to be able to implement the actual battle. But it's just, like I said, fun. So like I said, we've got two airborne here, and we've filled up this uh, Nimitz here with about nine planes, including RC, who's going to be flying one. And then this here is going to have four SU-33s that are going to take off and do air-to-air, -air, and you've got to do that. Predictions! Guys in the stream, I'll bring your stream now. Give me a prediction of who you think is going to win and why they think they're going to win it. I'll talk about my predictions first. Because of where we started, bearing in mind we don't have air power here, the Russians are going to have long-range supersonic anti-ship missiles. Uh, the Kirov does. The Moscow has long-range sandboxes, long-range supersonic missiles. Noise to doesn't, I don't think. And even the carrier missiles, I've forgotten which type exactly. Um, long range, you know, 300, 400 mile range. The Americans don't have that. The Americans rely on their Hornets to go out and kill stuff. Because they can't do that, they're, rely they're now relying on their cruisers and destroyers. The cruisers and destroyers do have anti-ship, but we're talking surface-to-surface -surface harpoons, AGM-84s, which are not much in compared to the Russian supersonic missiles. I mean, we're talking, you know, 60, 70 mile range or something. So these guys are going to get the first punch off with their long range supersonics. These guys are going to have to wait until they get close and dirty. That said, these Aegis cruisers are incredibly good. Destroyers, sorry. Incredibly good at shooting missiles out of the air. The Russians, not so good. They don't have that real cool Aegis anti-air defense. I would say it's a toss-up between the slow missiles of the US and the supersonic ones of the Roger. Russians. I'm just going to read out the value viewers. I bet Miss uh, American Carrier wins his sock. I bet Mr. Putin, Ivan. That's funny, Ivan. Eastern Bloc guy says Putin. The American says funny. USA are my full firepower. Uh, I mean, it depends how you measure it. They don't have more air-to-ground firepower. Again, if you ignore the air power, which is what we're doing, for the reasons I said. US Navy's going to win. Russia, because ED. Fair comment. Uh, Yanks, because freedom power. Fair point, King, uh, Penguin. Russian, because yeet. Don't know what that means. Uh, Bendy, Russian. Simba, Russian. Snags USA, Drazik Russian, Workshop Dave USA. I am Prison Mike. Where is my Patch Grim Reapers? Brilliant. Uh, Resi Yanks, Space Case, Crazy Ivan's gonna take this one. Arty, Dead Heat, both damaged. 
Question in real life, how many missiles does each US ship carry in DCS? They seem to have unlimited. They are modelled. I've checked this out. Each cell is armed and they do refill, but it takes like an hour to refill. So, you know, essentially they are limited. Really good point from Marty though. The Americans have a lot more missile nacelles, cells than the Reds do. Again, different naval doctrines going on here. Uh, they have more missiles on their side. I don't know how many. I've never added it up. I don't know. 500 missiles to... 100 missiles, it's something like that. Drazig, Vladimir kicks ass. Ivan, I bet on Mr. Putin. Penguin, just get a MiG-21 with a nuke on. Don't want to be America. Simba's going off on one. Gabak, think the US because of the Aegis. Fair point. Aegis is like a friggin' Iron Dome, you just can't get through it. Uh, Russians have more firepower, but don't work. That could be a problem. Don't give yourself a stroke when it comes out. Okay, valued viewers are given up. Three, two, one, go. No idea what's about to happen. Okay, the server hasn't crashed. That's good. Let's go and have a look at RC, shall we? On all his, all his fancy air power. Look at that. I probably could have fitted more on there, but it would have been a bit unfair to the Russians if I put like 20 on there and I could only fit four on the Russian one. Again, this is not really air power specific. Let's go and have a look at Mr. Rusky. Look at that. What a beast. Okay. Oh, missiles out already. Oh, Peter the Great's firing. Now, this is where you're in trouble, I see. Peter the Great carries, uh, not sandboxes. What does it carry? Kitchens? I always forget now. Big supersonic missiles. The Moskvas are firing as well. You see them? I think they are the sandboxes. Uh, they are the sandboxes. Look at these babies. Now, would you want to be on the end of that? A 1,000 knot supersonic missile. Uh, they're firing... In fours in DCS, um, I, mean, I don't really know if it's realistic or not. But I've heard they would not fire in fours, but I don't really know. Uh, no firing from the Noiser Stream Shigit. Shigit. Frigates. Ah, shipwrecks are coming out. The shipwrecks are coming out from the carrier. Now this is it. This is actually a carrier killing carrier. That's the funny thing about it. Also, the uh, SU-33s are taking off RC. What are you going to do about that? The what? SU-33s. There's a shipwreck. There's a shipwreck. Just going to try and get a look at that. Uh, where do we go in here? This is the thing I think that the Peter the Great are also firing. Yep, Peter the Great is also firing. In real life, these are intelligent, uh, kind of kind of um, a collaborative data link weapons. In DCS, they're just kind of just dumb weapons, if you like. Um, but they, they're going and firing. Right, massive onslaught from the Russian Navy. The missiles have already got 26 miles. No reply from the Americans, and we knew that. Because they don't have any long-range anti-ship weapons. I guess I'm seeing missiles on my uh, yes, display. You well, you've got probably 30 missiles in the air coming towards yeah, you. Are you going to bother? Are you going to bother taking off at all, RC? I, I'm uh, I'm in the air. Oh, that was quick for you. Wow, yeah. look at that. Go on, RC. Right, you've got you've got uh, anti-missile missiles, and they do actually work. So you've got to go and shoot down. You've got to go and shoot down the supersonic missiles with your phoenixes. Like, it is modelled in DCS, although you've got to do something weird with your radar to get to pick them up. Okay, missiles finally coming out from the uh, uh, from the Americans. Uh, we've got the Oliver Hazard Perry firing what is almost certainly the SM2s. SM2 Standard Missile 2 is what's simulated in DCS, which is a good kind of, I don't know, 90s-esque missile that would be used really for shooting anything down. But uh, in this case, it's going to shoot uh, probably the SU-33s, and it could actually shoot the missiles down as well. Uh, it's a pretty top-notch missile. Uh, nowadays, I think we'd use the standard missile six, which is even better. Thirty-five thousand feet. We think they're a bit overpowered in DCS, but again, I'm absolutely not an expert. We've got Enfield attacking uh, one zero one, distance of six miles. So everyone's armed up. Everyone's told to kill with the maximum weapons they can carry. So yeah, gesture won't lock any of these up. Well, it's not really a me problem. Okay, we've now got air combat. Really don't know what to watch now. There's just so much going on. There's actually a merge here, but there's a merge. How did that happen? Everything's set to max skill, oh, so... Am I merged with... Not you. You can see everything on your F-10, so you might as well just use it, because you would have a decent data link. Oh, there's all sorts of stuff going on. I really don't know what to watch here. Missiles being fired at each other. There's an Amram that's going to smack this guy in the face. It's going to do it. No, there's an SM2's got him. Boom! A thumping great warhead in that thing. Like a hundred pound or something warhead. Uh, God, I don't know. That there is going to smack that Hornet now. No, it's a shipwreck. Okay, right. The the missiles are coming in to, to your fleet now, RC. 
You're literally yeah. flying along inside the missiles. That's funny. But yeah, yeah. the SM2s the are doing their job. And like we said earlier, the Americans have got a lot, a lot more missiles than the uh, than the uh, than the Soviets or the Russians have. Boom! Sea flanker down. I can tell you this much: Chester is going crazy. Blues are winning the air war. I bet he is going rather crazy. Yeah. Missile five o'clock. Missile five o'clock. Missile yeah. five o'clock. <laughs> okay, Aegis is doing his job. Nothing's got through. Boom! Good work, Americans. Oh, Hornet's down. The Bog 18's just gone down. Well, that's a him problem. Mr. Wagner. SU-33's are starting to kick some bot-bot now. And one more guy, and then it's you, RC. So you're about to hit some serious Axioni. Oh, they've scrambled everything. Fire everything. F-14's are out. F-18's are out. Everything's launched from the US carrier group. Supersonic SU-33. It's of course, it's the standard naval Sukhoi uh, for fleet superiority. The intercept, whatever you want to call it. Look, it's flying formation with a shipwreck. Oh no, it's not. It's merged and just doesn't realise it. Look, there's a Bog 18 right down there. It's busy notching uh, grumbles. Now, there's a lot. Uh, these guys have to contain with SM2s from here. These guys have to contain with something even worse naval grumble missiles. Let's see if I can find one. And I can't. Shot from the Peter the Great and probably Moscow. No, I can't see any out at the moment. Range of 60, 70 miles. There is one. Look at this. Watch this. Oh, that's us. He does touch, touch, touch. Like, oh, I'm dead. How embarrassing. Right into a Navy grumble. Well, yeah. I mean, there were a thousand missiles coming out of well, me. I didn't know which one was coming some, for me. Some would call that an acceptable excuse. Some wouldn't. We, the Russians, I don't like to say this, but the Russians have passed the halfway mark. If we put the half, 70 miles now, so we're closing 18 miles or something. Okay, lots of Amrams out from the Americans now. They're going for spam ram uh, and phoenixes. Right, you can watch it now with me, okay? You could, get, couldn't fire at anything. We're getting a typical Lock. convey about action. Yeah, there's too many blips. Has anything hit anything? In yeah, the loads of plane. No, no. But, uh, the defense is just too powerful for the attack at the moment. But, yeah. oh, Sparrow just missed that guy by a gnat's bit. And he is going to merge with this guy now. Three miles, don't know what this bog's doing. It's just The problem is, like RC says, this is not as easy as it looks. You've got warnings everywhere. You've got grumbles going up. You've got sandboxes going up. You've got SM2s going up. You're getting beeps and warnings from your own stuff. It is just a madhouse. And in the 14, you can't discriminate between the plane and a missile. So mm -hmm. there's no way to tell what was what. Roger, I've got a missile. Uh, possibly friendly fire. No. Now, the interesting, a couple of bogs have just taken off and pushed right into the SU-33s. And balance of power is definitely in red because the reds have snuck fairly and squarely, to be fair. Uh, just uh, crap of sounds. There's out right now. There are. They and they're pumping missiles in. They missed them all. Yeah, I'm not sure why they're so bad, but they just are. <laughs> they just are, I'll see. Let's see, the Phoenix come in. AI nope, is missed. terrible unless they fight you and then suddenly they become amazingly good. Oh, we the missiles are getting through. The anti-ship missiles are getting through. We've got, oh, that was so close. Yeah, no, I got it. We really are taking the fight to the Americans. Absolutely amazing stuff going on here. No, that's a, I don't even know what that was. And we've got a, another bog down. That's another bog down. I don't know why the bogs are struggling. For some reason, they just can't cope in this environment. I would think, if anything, it would be the older Russian planes that were struggling. The power in these 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 missiles in. Look at that. 70, 27 going in. Possible kill right there. And... No dice. Tomcat escapes. Didn't set the fuse off. What's going on now? That's going to be a kill from a Tomcat. Also, oh, aim 54 yeah. in the face. You ain't escaping that at that range. As another one out. Another aim 54. Think? Oh, no. Yeah. It's like it didn't they... guide. Didn't guide. So many missiles out. Uh, this guy's merging. Oh! A Tomcat just ran straight. He's, he's overwhelmed. His SA was overwhelmed. Again, your RWR doesn't really work because it's getting, you know, triggered by every missile in the air. So there's no real defensive procedures here. It's just 
you know, goes back to almost World War II, just fly forwards and hope for the best. Good exchange here from a F-14 and an F-33. The F-14s are doing better than the Bogs. The Bogs just struggle for whatever reason. And they're all dead. Yeah, the Bogs are all gone. Uh, good, there's a good aim 54 going out here. Okay, the the Russians are getting depleted of missiles now, and this is the worrying thing, because the Blues haven't even started using their anti shooting ship missiles yet. That's a Phoenix kill. Oh, I didn't no. see that notch! It's turned around! No, it's not. Wow. That's a dodge. Okay, where are we going now? Where are we going now? What do we got? Uh, this guy is in trouble. 27. Just missed that 14. Zap, 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 zap. Zap, zap, zap. And we've got a 27. Go for this one. Oh! He escaped. He escaped. But look at the overwhelming force. Now, bearing in mind that the Americans had twice as many fighters, they just haven't been able to kill the Russians. And I only gave... Hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, oh, right. I see what's happened. And now, I said before I couldn't put more than four... Uh, on this ship. I tried to put 12. It looks like it did actually allow the 12. It just didn't show them. So actually, the Reds had uh, about four more planes. Oh, yeah. It will, it'll put them on the ship. It right. just will on them. I thought they weren't modelled. So, <laughs> yeah. So it turns out the Reds did actually have uh, more air power. I just didn't realise because, well, I don't know. I just never tried it before. Uh, so they're, they are going to win the air battle, um, obviously. Uh, now, that's not actually going to, it's only, a, you know, it's not actually going to have any effects on the war because nothing is air to ground here. Oh, there's a 14 has gone down. Oh no, I'm sorry, it's a blanker. But he's he's a dead man. That's a fast 27 in the in the bot bot. Oh, oh, good good notch. God, look no. at him. He's freaking Superman. Tom Cruise. Get some, baby. Can only survive so long. Oh, well done the visage. Right, the first battle's won. The air battle's won. I wonder if they're going to shoot down the AWACS. If they go and shoot down the AWACS, that it will actually have a massive effect because a lot of these missiles have been guided by the oh what's this guy done he's flanked around the side here su-33 is going for the AWACS I haven't told him to do that he's just done it with his own accord wow Russians are just cleverer in this game hashtag <laughs> I could get myself in trouble there couldn't I right we've got missiles past the submarine now which is clever we've got sandbox no I mean the balance of power has been in Red's favour massively but the important thing to the Americans okay. is nothing's got through nothing's got through and these guys are going to be depleted out of missiles. Let's go look at the Moskvars. Uh, whoops. One button. Now look. Oh. I was close to the casing. They used to leave the casings open. And you can see how missile, many missiles they got. And the amount of missiles is modelled. So they've probably run out by now. Those are sandbox uh, canisters. And now if we go and look at... Uh, let this one fire off. So ship versus ship now. And if we go and look at um, uh, just a destroyer. A tiddly little destroyer here. Every one of those nacelles carries a SM2 or a harpoon. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes. No, where are the harpoons on these ships? I can't actually remember. Uh, probably on the VLS. Right. No, they're probably on the VLS. So they're probably, these are full of, those are torpedoes that you're looking at there. Uh, these are probably full oh, of uh, SM2. I mean, look how many. Look, oh, there's one cell going up there. They're firing. Oh, SM2. they're on the side there, Cap. No, to they're the torpedoes. Right. They're torpedoes. Oh, they're torpedoes. Yeah. Um, I think the uh, older style, these will have them in there. Uh, this is Ticonderoga. There are the harpoons for the Ticonderoga. It's an older style. And the SM2s will be in the VLS there. Okay. Yeah. I study these quite a lot. Uh, right. It's all to play for. I wish you could see somewhere how many missiles they've got left. Like, Reds have got 600 missiles left. Blues have got so many missiles left. Like, our poor old guy's trying to get to the red, blue AWACS. Valley viewers are asking whether the Reds will try and gun the ships. Um, I mean, they might, but they won't get anywhere near the ships. The SM2s will just nail them. SM2 going after that one. Yeah, he can't, he can't get them to get to that AWACS for some reason. Oh, I need a sip of tea. How exciting. I'm amazed how the, well the SU-33s did. I guess they just had so many more guys in the air. Also, the Americans seem to suffer more in terms of EW. They just couldn't seem to launch missiles very well. The Russians seem to do launch missiles better. Okay, more sandboxes and uh, thingies. But again, what they needed to do was launch them all at once. If they launched them all at once, I reckon they could have overcome their defensive systems, but they never do for some reason. They just launch four and then it's like, hey, yeah, that'll probably do. 
Now remember, I mean, it's disputed how much damage you would actually do to a carrier, but these tend to have about a ton of chemical warhead on. Uh, when I say chemical, I mean, you know, high explosive. Personally, I think that would put uh, an aircraft carrier out of action, um, you know, for a day or two days, which is pretty much going to win your war, I'd imagine. Uh, that's what I think, but I don't, I don't know, obviously. I don't know if anyone really knows. AWAX killer's given up and he's going to land. Look, AWAX killer's landed. <laughs> okay. Did he? Yeah, did he? Did he? The, I, didn't, I didn't tell him to. So the uh, the SMTs he have done their job. Fuel. I don't know. The SMTs have done their job. That's usually what the case is. SM2's doing an amazing job. This one's trying to get around the south of the fleet, but look, the SM2 is just hounding him down. And they'll end up running him out of fuel again because this guy's got to use his afterburner. He's got to get low. It looks to me like the standoff is over because the Russians are out of missiles. They only have so many and they've done a terrible way of just firing a few holding, firing a few holding. In real life, I think you can just zap them all off, which is, you know, what any sensible guy would have done. And that's going to be the, the last shipwreck. Now, wouldn't it be lovely to know how many missiles have been expended? That'd be some great. Last one. That'd be Here's some one. great data. Oh, it should be intact view. Yeah, but I'm not going to sit and count all that. Yep, he's going back to Kassar. They're running out of ammo. Uh, running out of fuel. Sorry. Wouldn't it be funny if these were red bases and they could refuel and take off again. Okay, last shipwrecks going in, boys. Zap, 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 zap. Valley viewers are saying that this battle will be quite expensive. If someone wants to sit and count how many missiles are here and work out the expense of this battle, that would be appreciated. Bearing in mind that like 12 Tomcats have been shot down, pretty expensive. Look, this guy's still getting chased. <laughs> He'd be like, man, just leave me alone. Uh-oh, this isn't going to end well. Oh, on his final circuit, I'll see. In the face on his circuit. How embarrassing for him. Or well, why did you try and land at a base that was 10 miles from the carriers? You douches. They're just pumping out sporadic shipwrecks now, but it's pointless, obviously. Game's up. And the interesting thing here is valued viewers. The Reds don't have any more anti-ship ability. The planes won't carry it anymore. And, you know, they're just firing off the dregs of their shipwrecks and their sandboxes. So what have they got? Like a couple of deck guns. That's all they've got. Whereas the Americans haven't even started firing yet. Literally haven't started firing yet because we haven't got in harpoon range. Uh, later block harpoons could do like 200 miles or something. These will have earlier block harpoons. DCS is just how it's modelled. Uh, how far are we? We're 55 miles now. We're probably going to have to speed it up because I don't think anything will be happening for a while. So I'm going to speed it up. These are all probably going back to land now. They've got nothing to do. Huh? Oh, it's in multiplayer. Man. <laughs> I wish it was in single player now. That was your choice. Mm, I'm going to try and... There must be a way of judging how many missiles these guys have got. Because they've fired so many. Oh, this is an arm launcher, so we can't even count. That there on a frigate's an arm launcher. So what it would do, it would fire the missile, then it would go down into the magazine, pick one up from, yeah. the, uh, from the racks, and then fire it. It's an old system, and it's not a very good system. All sorts of problems with that. BLS is much better, yo. And funny thing is, they're expending four SM2s for every shipwreck. Now you can actually use SM2s as anti-ship missiles in real life. I'm not sure if you can in DCS. They've got a thumping warhead, and you can fire it at a, you can fire it at a ship, and you can kill a ship. Well, not kill, not sink it, but you can know, take a bridge out of a ship and so on. Anyway, for every for every shipwreck that comes out, pretty much four SM2s are being fired. That's a lot of SM2s are being shot. It must be hard programmed into DCS to fire four. Well, five were fired for that one. Six fired at that one. Seven fired at that one. That's it, valued viewers. I will... I mean, nothing's going to happen until we're in harpoon range now, so I'm going to turn the camera off uh, until we're in harpoon range. I can't fast forward, unfortunately. Welcome back, valued viewers. About, um, I don't know, 10 minutes or something's passed with the camera off. We are now 52 miles, and the first harpoons are coming out, literally at the maximum range of the DCS block harpoons. Uh, it doesn't say what block. Uh, oh, AGM 84S? I don't know. I don't know what that means. I think it just means surface launched variant, I'm guessing. There it is. A very different philosophy to the Russian kind of powerhouse missiles. Smaller, presumably cheaper. Slower, smaller warhead, and so on. So we've gone from a kind of ton carrier killing warhead to kind of... I, I can't remember now, but 100 kilos, 200 kilos maybe? Maybe a little bit more than 200 kilos? I forget exactly. 
but it's much smaller. And as you see, because of the way DCS works, as the each one goes through the, 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 the range, 52 miles, whatever it is, they will all start firing. Each is going to have... I know I didn't actually know the Oliver Hazard Perry had them. Let's see how it's launching them. Because it's got the SM2s on the arm there. Now we'd usually have some amidships or the rear in tubes, but we've got nothing here. I'm guessing it fires them from the VLS as well then. That's my guess. Looks like it's going to send them out in blocks of one, two, three. Let's see if we can get this guy firing. No. Nothing obvious. And I'm expecting as soon as that gets within range that the naval grumbles will shoot them down because, again, that's what they'll do. Um, we'll also have closer range uh, weapons. We'll have the Kashtan. It's like the Sea Wiz that these guys have. Uh, in real life, even that gun would fire. Could you fire and shoot them down? Uh, those are the Kashtans there. And they would also almost certainly have close range missiles. But so long since I've looked at this, I can't remember where they would be. So... I don't know, can't remember. Interesting the placement of the cash towns on the various vessels. That must be due to the how the vessel would likely be used. So maybe the Moskva is expected that they're just going to charge into the enemy. Hence you've got the cash towns on the front. And have you got any at the back? None at the back, which is interesting. Funny thing is I can't find an AGM 84S variant. I get the feeling they just it's like the one they made up just to say it's surface. It just means it's a surface variant. Yeah, there's no, there's no official. I doubt you would actually. Yeah. Now, I'd expected the Grumbles to have shot them down by now, but I guess I guess they're just too far out. And one interesting thing is the Harpoon is much smaller and uh, lower than the Russian equivalent. So, with, as you can see here, I think the Russians were flying about 150 feet. These are 50 feet. And smaller, so it's harder for a Russian radar to track, obviously. Distance of 20 miles. I would have expected to have uh, Navy Grumbles out by now, but I very much doubt they've all been used up. Uh, probably no cells there for the Moskva. And those were the anti ship missiles. Oh, missiles out. Right. Grumble. Yeah, we've got the Grumbles coming out now. They're going to obviously just come and shoot them down, basically. We're going to have this large exchange. Missed. And got one. It looks like the Americans are going to do this annoying thing of waiting until all four are shot down before they fire uh, four more. Again, as far as I know, we're completely unrealistic. In real life, if they wanted these harpoons to do anything, you know, fire 100 at once, or just don't bother firing. Yeah. How much can we do about it? We can't. We've got no options to change that. Are they in the same group, or are they separate groups? No, they came from separates. Oh, there you go. There's some more firing. I think it's saying two are destroyed, put two more out. I think they'll only have four at once. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, stupid. you're right. Yeah. You know, that's never going to get through. And we've got no way of controlling Some far more of way of weird logic. Yeah, yeah a bit annoying, isn't it? That might be something worth uh, reporting. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just aware it might be there because if every time they fire 200, uh, it would kill everyone's server. That's probably more likely yeah, why they did it. Yeah, look how many shipwrecks and things went out. Mm -hmm. And that was fine. Yes, it was. Yeah, it's going to fire four more again. Look. Um, I'll leave it recording, valued viewers, and I'll play it in fast forward, but I can pretty much guarantee none of these harpoons are going to get through. I'm going to go and do some other work in the background while that's recording. There they are. They're, they're coming out. Gauntlets. Oh, look at that. Oh, the gauntlets are coming out. Oh, we've run out of grumbles. Yeah. Uh, we've been yeah. away for about... What's the time now? Been Those things will take them out. out, though. Watch this. Look how many are going out. So we've run out of grumbles, which is interesting. I guess you just didn't have that many. And now Gauntlet's coming out, which SA-15 TOR missiles, modified for naval yeah. use. Boom. Uh, really good uh, anti-missile missiles. Yeah, it's yeah. really hard to get through them. And because Gauntlet, uh, the Gauntlet won't have, they won't have many missiles to stop for the Gauntlet. Actually, I'm not sure where they've been fired from, but I'll say that. I thought they were in small pack launchers. Uh, let me check the distance between the fleets now. Okay, the 40 miles, or less than 40 miles. So they are getting there slowly. Oh. 
and that last one's going to get taken down easily. And boom. Boom, there we go. I don't know where all the planes went, they just disappeared. Um, did anyone notice if they landed on the carrier? I don't think they did. Anyway. Uh, they landed... Oh, I don't know where they went. I don't know, it's gone now. Anyway, the next barrage, I'm going to go back to work. Oh, so it looks like you can put as many planes yeah. on as you want. Again, that's not what we wanted to do. I don't really want 80 Hornets oh. out there. Gauntlets coming out again. Yeah, basically it, it simulates them in the hangar of deck right. and then puts them up on the deck. It's a lot of gauntlets it's putting out. Oh, one's got three. Oh, 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 oh. endlich, endlich. Is it going for the sub? It's going for the carrier. They're always going for the carrier. Oh, yeah. Oh, so here we got one. We got it coming out for it. Oh, Damn. that's a closer. The Americans have got a closer so far. I think the carrier had launched something, but it Don't aborted. No joke. Eh, wah, wah. Getting closer, Americans. Right, back to work. They're increasing the salvo size. The Americans are probably due to their range now. Like you said. And eventually, someone's going to get through. Maybe. Because there's only so many tours this dude can have. Yeah, but there's other... Don't the other ships have... I see. Yeah, Moskva. Well, I thought Moskva. They've got the cells at the back, the Moskva does, but they don't seem to be firing for some reason. Well, oh, these must be the tours. Distance between is now 37 miles. They don't seem to be getting closer anymore. I know they are, but... Okay, another salvo going out, valued viewers, as you can see. I'll leave you to watch that. Seems to be more with every uh, salvo. Wow, look at all those going out. That has got to run out at some point. It just has to. Smash. 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 Gotcha. Four more. Ah, now it looks like the blues have stopped launching. Are they out finally? Has that been all of the salvos? Check distance between each group is now 32 miles. Welcome back, valued viewers. have just been wearing the Russians down. Uh, the Russian carriers now firing because it's the only vessel left with tours. All the naval grumbles oh. are gone. And this is the SA-15s firing out now. So it's now who is going to run out of missiles before they get into gun range and then it's going to be guns on guns which is going to be weird but cool in fact that's it oh, I see that's all the harpoons gone oh is that it yeah okay. we're just going to leave it running now until we get in gun range of about you know I don't know 15 miles something like that biggest guns are going to be with Peter the Great of course look at he's got a massive twin 120 mil barrel no I got that wrong I got it wrong it's this one For the forward facing Moskva heffing great guns they are Everything radar guided, obviously. Um, but it's going to be a while yet, so I'll, we'll come back in in a bit. Okay, valid viewers, we're now down to 22 miles, 22 nautical miles. I don't think it's going to be long, I don't know when, but before we can start blasting those cannons, they can shoot over the horizon since World War I. Uh, but, you know, we could shoot over the horizon with director towers and whatnot. So with radar, we could definitely shoot over towers. I don't want to miss the action. Now, here's the problem. At the front of the Red Fleet are the biggest, world's giantest cannons. Uh, not literally, but, you know, some massive cannons there. Front-mounted, whoops, front-mounted. But on the blues, the destroyers up front, uh, sorry, not, uh, frigates up front, have a mid-mounted gun, which can't fire forward because of its own superstructure. So the front of the blues can't even fire, and that's, to be honest, not really a supercat problem. So we'll just see what happens. Uh, the subs almost certainly w just won't do anything. I don't think they're AI coded to go and fight yet. So they'll probably just fly under each other and not do much. At this point, RC, who are you betting on? Uh, in terms of manpower, ignoring the submarines, the Blues have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight warships, excluding a carrier. The Reds have got one, two, three, four, 
five warships, so three less warships. But they do have some bigger cannons on them. Yeah. I mean, look at the Peter. Know. Oh no, Peter the Great hasn't got a cannon. Oh. No, it's definitely. Oh, it does, but it's rear mounted. Massive uh, AK 30s or whatever they are, but they're rear mounted. And again, they're just not intelligent enough to swing the bow, uh, the stern round, I don't think, to fire. Um, again, AI, naval AI in DTS is pretty idiotic. So, hmm, okay. Let's carry on. I'm guessing Moskova is going to fire first. We'll just have to see. I'm going to estimate about 16 nautical miles. I think it's an equal bet. I think Blue's all 70 miles. 17 miles now. Let's keep going. I want to see that big, those big hoofers going. Now at 13 miles and they're not shooting at 13 miles. Are they even going to fire at each other? They're going to run into each other. Oh yes, look, we've got manoeuvring. Now if this were a battleship, he would be bringing his uh, stern guns um, to fire, but I'm not sure what he's doing here. I wonder if they've actually reached the end of their waypoint and they're going to turn around just before they... No, he's firing, he's going to fire. He's going to fire. Look at those big guns. About the blues, are they getting ready? Oh, no, I'm just trying to get a cool screenshot. He's about to open up, Valley viewers. Look at he is doing some sort of defensive or offensive posturing. I don't know why. For me, I would try and put a uh, bow on, but okay. Let's see the uh, blues. No interest at all. And I haven't biased anything. I've just told them to go into each other, and that's it. That's all I've told them. Blue, no interest at all. Now the Moscow is definitely doing something, and I'm not sure what. Just going. Oh, there it is! There it is! Oh, it's absolutely glorious. Can't stop the screen shaking. That was a massive calibre. Look at that. Douche, douche, douche. You can see the shells going up if you look carefully on 60 FPS. Uh, they are going to come down on some unlucky sod's head. Now, the thing about naval gun warfare as RC is inherently inaccurate. Even with radar guided, it's horrendously inaccurate. And the idea is, it always has been, shoot as far as you can, all the way back to Jutland, shoot as far as you can and as quick as you can to get as many rounds out. But in reality, it's not always that useful because you just use all your ammo and you don't actually hit any. Here we go. Look, on this Oliver has a parry. Firing? Oh. F6 does not work. Sure. Okay, I think he's changed his target. Must have go for this guy for some reason. So I think firing, I think it's actually a disadvantage. No, so what is he shooting at? I don't know what he's shooting. Submarine? No, submarine submerged. He's shooting at someone over there, but he's not doing it very well. Not him. Must be the lead guy. Yep. He's, he's got his radar wrong, look. He's ranged it wrong. Oh dearie me, look at that. That is just missing, missing, missing. It's not even straddling. The idea is you want to get a straddle across one of these ships, I'll see. Well, it would have been in the battleship days anyway. Look, something's gone wrong with the calculations and they're all going long. Never seen that before. <laughs> Wind, maybe? No, we're all straddling, we're straddling. We've got hits. We've got hits. And there's 130s, they pack such a punch. Would you want to be on that ship, I'll see, yes or no? Yeah. You wouldn't want to be on the ship. Right. Look at sure, that. why not? I mean, you could even sink it by putting so much water on the deck. It's like... Oh, it stopped. It stopped. He's out of ammo. What did I just say, RC? Oh. What did I just say? Use all your did ammo he... up. And he missed. Did he use all the ammo or did I he just he did. sell it? I bet he did. And he's only done a quarter damage. Let me go and check out his situation. Now, this, I have no idea what's going to happen. I've never done anything like this before in terms of the scale. The gun shut down, the gun shut down, that almost always means that he is out of ammunition. Wow, what an idiot. Okay. What's going to happen is this next? Still heading right into the. Y yep, the it's thing. gone. He's, they're, they're going straight forward now. Uh, they're not. Uh, again, they're not clever enough to go to flank speed. Instead, they're just sitting at the cruise speed I set them at. But, you know, what are you going to do? Okay, the next Moscow is firing. That gun. That gun, though. 
And he's out of ammo. Ha <laughs> ha What an idiot. Do this to an idiot. It's the same guy, I imagine. First bullets haven't even started falling. Oh, there they are. Like I said, it's a stupid way of fighting, I think. But it is apparently still Doctrine. That is what... Oh! Midships, a direct hit. They pack a punch those rounds. Another midships. Look at that. Look how cool that looks. He's damaged. Again, they're so stupid. Why are they focus on the frigate? Why not the carrier or, you know... His admirals are both going to get sacked. Okay, bits are flying off the ship now. Look at that. Jesus Christ, RC. Look, there's a section missing. There's a section missing. In fact, the gun's, <laughs> the gun's just sitting in midair. The whole oh, section's yeah. falling off. Oh, that needs reporting. Okay. That's not good. And he's well, dead. He's dead. What right. is that ship? That was uh, Oliver Hazard Perry. Uh, okay. uh, just wrote it down as midships damage model. Uh, right. Now, the Blues have lost a frigate. That's no longer serviceable vessel. It will stop and it may or may not sink. The problem is, the two Moskvas on their AK-30s or whatever they're called, the big guns, are all out of ammo. Peter the Great, because, well, I don't know why, actually, but Peter the Great doesn't... Uh, has a rear-facing gun. And he's almost certainly not going to get to use it. Which is weird. Carrier, because uh, Netsov doesn't have a gun, or, you know, only some phalanxes, which is going to be about as useful as nothing. And what else have we got? Some old 20-year-old, 30-year-old Neustrashimis and tiny puny little guns I'm going for blues now start placing your bets valued viewers and tell me why I'll put you on the screen so the valued viewers can see you distance is 10 miles I expect these guys will be able to fire soon but look where's their gun where's their gun it's a midships look it can't fire well yes it can but it's it's uh not in range yet again you can see them here. In real life, you wouldn't be able to see them. They'll be over the horizon at 10 miles. Well, to an extent, they'll be over the horizon. You can probably see the top of their antennae and stuff like that. But radars, so you'd bend that radar around the around the curve and you would be able to radar them. Maybe the Russians are reloading. Maybe. That would be interesting. We do need some battleships, adding. I would love battleships. I've read a few books now about... Uh, World War One and World War Two battleships, mainly World War One, and it's, it's inc seriously interesting. I really need to get into a ship game as well. You're not getting into. A ship. No, I'm not getting into a ship game. I mean, it I it is. If the Earth is flat in DCS, it's modelled as flat. No, it's visually flat, but it is modelled uh, logically as round. It's kind of hard to explain. It's a bit of a weird way. Well, actually, it's quite a clever way of doing it. Blues are not fighting. Why are they not shooting? Oh, we've got damage. We've got damage to a... Moskva here. What's going on? Oh! Moskva's under attack! By accurate fire! From what? Look gun? at that! I have oh, yeah. no idea what's doing that. <laughs> Look, they're just... Oh, who would have thought you'd see a beautiful Moskva in such bad shape? Oh, no one likes to see that. Wondering what the bangs are, those are the sonic booms from the shells. Well, pretty sure they are. The radar is done for me. Yeah. Uh, no, the 3D radars are going, and in fact, both are going. It's taking heavy, accurate fire, though, and so much more accurate than these guys were firing at. And it's true that uh, as range drops off, Accuracy drops off quadratically or something, some really heavy. Right, let's find out who's firing here. It's not him. So who the heck is firing? Oh, hang on, it's not the submarine. No, it's not the submarine. Who's firing? Oh, we've got a destroyer. We've got an Aegis destroyer with a thumping great whacka whacker who's doing it. And he's so much more accurate than the Russian ship. Pound, pound, pound. 
There's the target. Look at that. Absolute destruction. Who doesn't like naval gun war? <gasps> Moskva! You're bleeding. I ain't got time to bleed. Wow. Just wow. How many times do you get to see a fight like that? From space, satellite be like, that's cool. Told you blues are weak. Now the thing is, did the blues have less range on their guns, or did they were they cleverer and waited to fire? That's the question. I reckon they waited like another seven miles before firing. And the accuracy just charges up. Oh, Moskva! I wonder how many souls has the Moskva got? Does anyone know? More than one. That's gonna sink. They're gonna sink it. Now the radars will stop turning. Yeah, that is a dead ship. They're not leaving it alone. Look. Then, oh look, she's on fire. Midship, she's on fire. Oh, uh, deploy the abandoned ship. Abandoned ship. No, they're still falling. The thing is, those bullets, those shells take so long since they've been fired to hit. Oh, we've got another hit. I reckon she'll sink. She's taking so much damage. No! Right, yeah. The hull, everything's blown up. Very cool. Where does that leave us? Yep, she's dead. Submarine submerged. Okay, what's going to fire next? This guy's out of ammo. So I'm going to guess this destroyer here is going to attack this guy at 10 miles. That's what's going to happen. Peter the Great's not going to do anything of any use. Uh, although he is. When he gets up alongside, he could theoretically shoot. Right, I think the next guy to be firing will be this guy. So we're going to scroll forward a bit. He may even be out of ammo. Again, same doctrine of fire as long... Oh, 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 oh. Someone's straddling. Someone's straddling the second Moskva. Who is it? Who is Maybe it? the guy behind the other one. I'm, I'm, I'm having a pop at this. Yes! Oh, that's not that has a Perry! Tiny, look at the rate of fire. The thing about those small guns is, the rate of fire on them is just superb. Which is what's important at the end of the day, how much lead per minute you can put down. Absolute pandemonium. Pandemonium. I think they carry more rounds as well by the feel of it. I'm not going to sit there and count, but okay, damage is happening. I mean, that's good shooting. That's, that's within 10 miles. Let's see if this guy's shooting. No, not interested yet. I reckon that Aegis is out of ammo. Just ran out of ammo before that sunk, I reckon. No one's had a pop of Peter the Great yet. Oh, ho, ho. Poor old Russian fleet. Should have upgunned, boys. Gun turrets just taken out. When those shells explode, RC, you get, um, it causes what are called splinters, like these tiny bits of metal that fly all over the ship, like supersonic speed. Like you get the hail, just imagine pelting every shell, causes thousands of nails. Oh, we're being, Peter the Great's under it under fire now it's kicking off Pete the Great's under fire I don't know who's doing it not him I'm thinking the second dest you know, destroy man. well it's too late now Arthur. so you can't just you said you can't just well, change your mind I said pre, I oh I was decided to capture right now no I was I was equal like either one of them could have won now this is classed as a battle cruiser RC and it's they're, they're, they're classed by weight by tonnage the thing is I mean, it's not like a battle cruiser of the olden days. It's not like a battle cruiser of World War One or World War Two. It's got no armour. 
It's got no armaments in terms of old school guns. It just carries lots of missiles and it's a bit heavy tonnage. Again, this may have, I don't know, a thousand souls on it. It's a big ship. The other Moskvas. Uh, and this is good thinking from the Blues. The Blues knew that that guy over there is out of ammo and they left him alone. Peter the Great has got full ammo, so they're going to go for him. I reckon they're all going to go for him, put him out. In real life, Pete, if, you know, if they were going to actually fight like this, Peter the Great would pull probably, I don't know, stop? No, probably, I don't know, turn either left or right. Uh, oh, hang on, what's happened here? Had a change in... No, I don't know. Either way, this guy would pull left or right and bring that big gun to bear. We've had a, we've had a lull. Problem is, no one's got enough ammo. Let's go and have a look at that, uh, the sinking. Sap, 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 sap. That is Trey Unfortunate. Trey Unfortunate. Uh, right, he's out of ammo. He's out of ammo. The next thing that happens is when this guy's 10 miles from something, which he is. Well, what's that? Someone's under fire. No, someone was under fire. Yes, he is. One of the blues is under fire. Oh, high caliber shells landing on this. Oliver has a parry. Where is it coming from? Who the heck is firing? Has Pete the Great got a solution? No. There's no one else to fire. A carrier doesn't have one. Is he firing? No, he's out of ammo. Tell me it's not one of these little noise trashimis. Oh, look at that! A frigate! A frigate has joined the action all the way from the rear ranks. Zap! Zap! Terrible rate of fire on the Russian. He's gone for the easy target, look. Zap, 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 zap. Nice. He's going to put that frigate out of action. I would have left him. This frigate's hopeless. He's out of ammo and he's... You know, you've got to think tactically here, RC. We're playing battleships at the end of the day. I'd love to have been a World War One battleship commander. Admiral. No, not an admiral. I would want to be a... I don't know. I can't remember. Oh, it's only on the inner mesh, I'll see. Look, on the mip mapping, when you zoom in, it disappears. When you zoom out, when the mesh gets smaller, it's modelled okay. So they've just cocked up in the 3DS file. Oh, that's going to break its back. Everything's gone. Look, Valley Viewers, everything's gone. shouldn't be wasted. Oh, he's dead. He's dead. What a waste of ammo from the Noise Trishimi. Uh, uh... Yeah. Okay, this guy's getting hit. We've got a Moskva under fire from somewhere. Oh! No, that's old. Now, who the heck is firing at him? Who's firing? I'm going to guess him. No. Oh, why's he stopped? Uh-oh, I think I may have found a problem in my mission design. Ah! The task force has stopped. Up? Yeah, I've run out of my waypoint. Okay, well, hopefully the red will still go. He's not firing. We've got a mystery firer. There he is! It's a Burke. We've got a Burke firing. We've got three ships under fire. What's going on? What's going on? Middle Moskva's under fire now. I saw Pete the Great blowing up for a minute. Oh, no magazine hit. Imagine if we've got a magazine hit simulated. Boom! That's one times dead Moskva. Both Moskva's under fire now. These Russians are getting slaughtered. These cruisers, like two or three times the tonnage of the frigates on the blue side. He's just belching smoke. He's a dead man. Let's go and have a look at his mate. Oh, he's not faring too well either. I'm not even sure we're going to get to a merge. We do. I wonder if they're going to start phalanx each other. 
Oh, 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 ouch. In the helipad. Don's the helipad. He's all shut up, RC. He's all shut up. Take me back to Mother Russia. And that's it. He may have been spared there because uh, the, whichever who was shooting ran out of ammo. I don't think he's operational, even if he reloaded. Uh, I don't think he can fire with that amount of health. So we're a Mos two Moskvars down. Oh, something's happening here. We've got a... Oliver has a Perry under fire. From an unknown source. Who is the combatant? Who is the combatant? That's the Kuznetsov. There's a map Moskva sinking. You want me to hold the camera skills? Sorry, I can't. There we go. Moskva sinking. Yeah, the Great's under fire! Oh my goodness gracious me! This never ceases! Peter the Great, whoops! Peter the Great is under fire! Okay, we're now in full visual. We're not over the horizon anymore. Probably five miles away from each other. Peter the Great is getting slaughtered hit after hit after hit. He may have tonnage, but... He can't sustain this many hits. I love playing battleships. Playing battleships is awesome. It doesn't help that his deck's so wide. His beam is massive. It's going to suck up shells like a... Oh, no. Peter. Peter, talk to me. You can't go down. The Ruskies are relying on you, sir. Check out health bars. Peter the Great's dead. OMG. And Oliver has a Perry at the front's going down. Oh, I have no idea who's firing at who. He's not firing. He's not firing. He's not firing. I don't even know who's firing. The Ticos aren't firing. No idea who's even firing. Peter's not dead, but. His gun! His gun is aiming! Peter's giant cannons are aiming! What could this mean? I don't think he can actually fire when he's in the red. If he can, we're in for a real treat. Watch this, valued viewers. Come on, fire, fire, fire. Everyone wants to see this happen, Peter. Damn, I wish he hadn't got hit. This guy's still getting hit. Die, Oliver has a Perry. You and your children's children. Boom, boom. A May Z. I can see his superstructure is blown off. He's got no bridge. He's got no bridge. It's dead. Oliver has a parry. No, Peter the Great can aim, but he can't fire because his health is so. Oh my god! Look at that! Absolute thundering cannon bluster. Unbelievable. Notice none of them are shooting the key. Aspect. Yeah, you notice that. Um, should we go for the carrier? Nah, can't be bothered, mate. <laughs> Oh, now that. Peter the Great's battle cannons are about to... L l Hell Mary, the heck, out of this destroyer. Good thing about this destroyer is it's it's small in size, which does matter. Oh, my goodness. What's, who's getting fired at? Who is getting fired at? That is a... Second Moskva. Oh, here we go. Landing. Second Moskva. Oh, the size of the shelves! Gracious me! The fleet emerged, basically. And Moskva's dead. The screen shakes so much when a 130 mil lands. Bang, 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 bang! This makes me want to write a poem. About not having a sea legs or something. Oh, the Moskva's on fire. It's just lost its superstructure. And here's the problem: the Russians are so inaccurate. They get like one in one in fifty hits, whereas the Blues get miles better accuracy. 
That said, we just <laughs> just got three hits on this destroyer. It will be feeling that in the morning. Oh, Peter's out of ammo. Peter's out of ammo. Oh, I don't think it matters though. That is one destroyer. <laughs> that destroyer is destroyed. Look at that. It's just on fire and midships. Full of holes. That's going to sink. That's going to sink. What's happening to Mr. Moskva? I oh, know he hasn't even been damaged. Yes, he has. No. Okay, it's obviously bugged. Oh, the destroyers can't take any damage. Right, add it to the list. Oh, no, it's not. It's a different one. It must be a different one. Moskva's gone. What's going on now? We're going to get merch here. We're going to get cash towns on sea whizzes. Okay, there is apparently a Moskva over there that's getting hit, but I can't see. No, it's not there. Apparently, it's not there. Oh, just sitting there. Get off, get off. Get in your lifeboats, boys. Mm. Not want to be there. That's sinking. That's sinking. It's sinking. Nine, nine, nine. Give the order, Captain. Give the order. No, we'll go down with the ship. It wasn't uncommon for these ships to be scuttled, RC, in combat, so that the enemy couldn't get hold of them. Oh, Peter's under fire. Right, now it's really kicking off. And Peter can't answer back. No idea who's firing at the moment. Let's see. Uh, that's an aircraft carrier. Yep, it's a Tico. Pretty puny cannon, but it's going to do the job. Bang! Bang! Oh, Peter the Great is getting absolutely neutralised. What happened there? He's dead. Peter's dead. All we've got is a couple of noise trashimis that are out of ammo. Uh, a submarine that's not going to do anything. And a Kuznetsov that's not going to do anything. I'm pretty sure that's about to call this as a blue victory, but... Give it a couple of minutes, because you never know. Never know. I'm so tempted to get in combined arms and take control of these subs, but I'm not. I'm not. I won't do it. They're just... Everything's out of ammo now. They're just going to sail into each other, and I don't think anything's going to happen. Oh, 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 oh! We're getting shot, because Netsov's getting shot. We're about to get a winner, finally. One bullet. They fired one bullet at it. Really? That's all we're going to do? Technically, if it's damaged it, they'll they'll win. Oh, impact! One bullet again. Oh, I keep firing just one shell. It's really weird. Star shell, fire! Carriers have merged. Go on, Felix, each other. I dare you. Now here's a weird thing, RC. The red carrier is in the middle of the blue fleet, but no one's got any bullets to hurt each other. Gonna be a draw, isn't it? Oh, the cash tans are! Oh, who's all this coming? Who's all this coming? The cash tans are firing at the other ships. This is getting better and better. <laughs> Look at that! That's a 30 mil high explosive. That could do some damage. Oh my goodness gracious me! Where is he? He's getting hit. He's getting damaged. Oh, she's cross. One ship in the world you would not want to be on. Next to... Oh, it turns out it's Battle Carrier RC. Not an aircraft carrier. It's Battle Carrier. Look at that. Even AMD's struggling to handle this. Dun, 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 Three cash towns versus one Sea Whiz. I'm betting on the cash towns. It's basically a Gow 8 versus an M61. Go on. Look how much lower the cash towns have to fire. Look how much higher the Vulcan has to fire because of its slower velocity and bullet and uh, weight and whatnot. Well, I could watch this all day, baby. Oh, it's on fire! It's caught on fire! 
can only handle so many cash cans and midship she's on fire RC this is ridiculous Yeah, she's dead. Wow. Wow we did not see that coming. The cat is very scared. I oh, got a bit shouty there. Oh that's okay. Look at that. Could we have a carrier v carrier Kashtan v Sea Wiz finale, RC? It looks like it's on the cards. Ooh, yep, that's a dead ship. Oh my god. I wonder if this um Kilo class submarine is actually gonna do anything. No, it's just like, pff, I don't care. It's not my fight. <laughs> two miles. Either carriers are two miles from each other now. It's a head. It's a face-off. It's a face-off. Here we go. The biggest fight in history. 40,000 tons. No, what's this? 30,000 tons versus, what's a super carrier? 50,000 tons? 60,000 tons? What was Yamamoto? 70,000 tons. It's going to be big. But firepower, I'm going with the cash tans. That's essentially a GAU-8. Well, very close to a GAU-8 at the end of the day. Look at them. Twin mounted pilot. I mean, look at that. That is like Transformer death turret. One thing you would not want to face in the world. Strap me in front of a Sea Wiz. I'd rather take that. Oh, it's on. It's on. Here he goes. Here's the big one. Here's the big one. Just a single cash down. We may be down on ammo. For some reason, the sea wizards on the supercarrier aren't firing. I've not told them not to. So if they don't fire, that's a them problem. Dun, 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 dun. Look at that. It's what we call a thing of beauty, RC. We in this business. Nice. Yeah, he's not firing. Go suck a lemon, Colonel, whoever you are. And um, where is he? Come on, let's get some Dimarja here. Bum, 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 bum. Wouldn't be able to use that deck for very long, I tell you that. Okay, all the cash turns are firing now. Bum, 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 bum. They're not going to get a chance to kill each other. They're going to just carry on my path. How annoying. Amazing. Look at that. Right. That's the best they're going to do, I think. Now, has that done any damage? Supercarrier, which is a big B. <gasps> Supercarrier is more damage than Kuznetsov. Oh, my God. This could be a big upset in the DCS community. This could be a big upset. Oh, my goodness. What's happening here? We've got a mer destroyer on destroyer merge. That one is shot to B word. But one we're not allowed to say. And this has got cash tans. It's got a cash tan turret. I know it's stupidly modelled, but uh, it should be firing. Go on, fire. Fire, douchebag. Ah, you lady. All right, I think that's about it, guys. I can't see anything else that's going to happen here. Though I don't want to get myself in trouble for not trying. What else could possibly happen? These guys all fired their ammo, and the sea wizards went fire. Only thing that's firing now is Kuznetsov. I guess I'll quickly watch it through. Uh, Kuznetsov is full health, even though it's been hit a few times. That's not a me problem. Supercarrier is one pixel off. One pixel off. Although, technically, it will still be a draw. But These ships might actually hit each other. That would be a little embarrassing, wouldn't it? I would not be one to be on that collision. That would be some serious K. Oh! Okay. No, I'll take it back. Things are definitely happening. A bullet just came from somewhere. Yep. <coughs> We're being hit. Because Epsilon's being hit. I don't know where it's coming from. Weird sporadic shooting from someone. Is this God sending bullets down? Because I can't see... Oh, I can't see any ships firing. 
literally there it is it's a tico at the end oh it's it's blowing himself up i'm gonna have to pause here what the c word is happening how there's a destroyer that's just got hit oh i don't know what's going on oh the destroyer Lois Shimi just got killed where did that happen and now oh my goodness gracious me could we have any more upsets oh the ticos have got a gun on the rear and it's just got line of sight look what a sneaky way to end the battle chuck those bullets sir did not see that coming and everyone's a hit it's a dang 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 lieutenant dang look at that what a way to finish they're all hitting the suit on the island look Kuznetsov you were valiant valiant to the very end sir he even had a cheeky pop at the supercarrier. But the blue tactics this time around were just superior. And how long the battle's been going for? It's been going on for two hours and 22 minutes, this battle. It's literally like a real sized ship battle. We even had a lunch in between this. That's it. Man, it's done. It's done? No. No, something else is going on. Well, He's, once the carrier is done, it's done. Yeah. That's it. Valued viewers. And he's done. I'm going to let him sink. I'm going to let him sink. Oh, yeah, oh look, he's coming yeah. down. He's oh, there down. he goes. Oh, no. Hilfe mir. Hilfe mir. Never seen one of these things before. Look at it, look at it. Oh, uh, next Sunday fun day. Can you land on a carrier that's half submerged? <laughs> Problem oh is it doesn't God. speak half submerged, does oh, it? I was joking, I'll say, Jesus Christ, catch up. We good, we did. Yeah, we need to, I, I've got a way of doing it. We can, we can do it in shallow water. Someone's about to get a nasty letter from ED, I think. It's not different than landing it on when it's out of the Nine. Finally, endly. Look at that. Let me go down, RC. RC, are you watching? I am. Bridge be like, oh my god, get out, boys. Get out, Dimitri and Mr. Kuznetsov yourself. Oh, it's actually spouse going up, no, it isn't. Now, this is interesting, it actually tilted when it went down. I've seen that before. Ich bin Admiral Kuznetsov. Putin is not happy. I only had one of those. And it never actually goes up dock. The Red Fleet is burning, valued viewers. The Red Fleet is burning. Look at the flag go down. Oops. The 3D radar is going down. And we have come to an end. Woo, right. Time to review. There is nothing left of the Red Fleet. The subs are still down there, but like I said, they don't do anything. Merchant ships probably won't even get shot at. Uh, the Blues suffered... Oh, God, one, two, three, four. Half of their warships were destroyed. I can't that as destroyed. Half of their warships were destroyed. And the carrier was damaged, but not destroyed. So... What an epic fight in every way possible that was. Really, really good. So let's quickly summarise. Uh, the aeroplanes at the beginning took off and did things, but, the, you know, we didn't want the aeroplanes to fight because the reason is the blue aeroplanes are programmed to carry harm, uh, harpoons and can come and attack ships, whereas the red don't have any high-fidelity planes that can go and retaliate, so it would have been completely pointless. So aeroplanes were there really for eye candy and a bit of coolness. Um, the ships was what it was all about. The Reds started off with massive supersonic missile barrages and tried, but they just didn't fire enough at a time. There wasn't enough in the air at a time to get through the Aegis uh, SM2 net. And the SM2s, I don't think a single one got through of all those missiles. Um, no damage were done. Then, within uh, when we get within 40 miles, the harpoons came back from the blues. Again, not enough in the air at the same time, and nothing got through. The the 
Red's air defense was much worse. It had a couple of grumbles, but they just couldn't carry many missiles compared to the Blue's SM2. And there just wasn't a big Aegis net like there was on the Blue. That was so much easier to get through. And it, they ended up relying on, not rolling fins, uh, what do they have? Oh, tours in the end. And when you've got through to the tours, you know you're almost there. So we've almost got some hits. Uh, but in the end, missiles were cancelled out by missiles. And, you know, it, it became a guns fight, which is inevitable in the end. Uh, and the Blues had a better guns fight. They carried more ammo in their gun. The guns were smaller calibre and they had less... Well, no. They had, the guns were smaller in calibre, but the rate of fire was higher. They used them much closer in, 10 miles rather than 16 miles. And um, so they were hit more. And they got, yeah, and I said more ammo. And we had more of them, basically. Peter the Great had a gun, but he could only use it sporadically because it was at the back, which is, like, pointless and it's not clever enough to, to turn. And the noise Trashimis weren't much gas. So, superior victory. We finally have it at the end. Really happy with that. Anything you want to add, Mr. RC, if that is your real name? Nothing to add. I hope you enjoyed that and see you later.